So they were in a certain area. What did that tell you based on your experience in terms of looking for firearm or other clues about where a potential shooter may have been? Well, the shooter would have had to have been in proximity, very close proximity, standing right next to where these cartridge casings are landing, because as you are firing, the gun is kicking them out of the weapon and they are landing on the ground. So the gun would have to have been fired in close proximity to where they are landing or they are falling to the ground. Did you take photographs of the crime scene that night? Yes, I did. If I could ask you to look at government's exhibits four through four X as an x-ray. Okay. Have you looked through all of those? Yes. Are those all photographs that you took that night? Yes, they are. Are they all fair and accurate depictions of the crime scene as you found it that night? Yes. If I could draw your attention to, if you could go back to Government's Exhibit 4, and I do ask permission to publish this exhibit. It was published through the defendant in the last exhibit. If you could just look at Government's Exhibit 4, I don't know if you could see a screen to your left. Are you able to see that? Yes. Is that the condition of the victim when you arrived on the scene? Yes, it is. And these cones that were testified about earlier by you, what's the significance of these cones? Just basically making another inner perimeter encompassing the cartridge casings, identifying the location that they were in. Just generally, if you could just show on the screen where these cartridge casings as a general matter were found. They were found basically just above the decedent. I don't know if I can make a mark along here or not. Basically, from within about a foot above him to about eight or nine feet further above him. So the closest would have been about a foot from him and the farthest about eight or nine feet. Eight or nine feet, yes. If I could show you government's exhibit 4A, do you have 4A to your left? Yes. Is that a close-up view of the victim? Yes, it is. And if you could just show where on that picture approximately would be the closest cartridge casing to the victim. I believe the closest one is just, it is actually just above. I don't know if it will make a mark on there or not. There is no way to make an easy mark probably just above his head, probably within less than a foot. If I could show you government's exhibit 4B and just ask if I could just have you focus on the victim's left inside of his left arm. What is that a picture of or what does that show in that picture? On the ground is a wallet with E1 Salvador written on the front of it. And 43 through 4H are all photos of cartridge casings. Is that right? Through 4, I believe it is 4. 4I, yes. And if I could just show you government's exhibit without showing any of those, government's exhibit 4J. If you could just look to your left when it comes on the screen, do you see government's exhibit 4J? Yes, I do. Although it is tilted to the side, there is a number 10 and there is, looks to be written in yellow in the circle. Could you just tell the jury what is within that circle? 
that's the closest cartridge casing to the decedent that we could find. And the number 10, what does that signify? That was the 10th item that I collected when I was actually drawing my diagram. Item number one was not a cartridge casing, but two through 10 were. So those were written by you at the scene? Yes. If you could look at Government's Exhibit 4K, what does that show on Government's Exhibit 4K? 4K were the items that were in this right front pants pocket. Were they taken out of his pocket? Yes, I took them out. If you could look at Government's Exhibit 4L, what is the significance of that picture? That's the social security card that was inside the wallet right next to him. Was that for the purpose of identifying the victim? Identifying what information we had in the wallet. I am not going to publish 4M and 4N, but if you could just describe what is 4M. 4M is the vehicle that was right next to the victim or right by the closest one to him at the parking space by his feet. And a bullet had struck the front of the vehicle going through the grill into the engine compartment. We used a dowel rod to push through the hole and determine the trajectory that the bullet had entered the front of the vehicle. What's a dowel rod? Dowel rod is a wooden rod, small diameter. We paint it bright orange so you can see it. It shows up better in the pictures. And by running that through, as long as you had two, at, at least two holes, the dowel rod goes through and it holds itself and you can lock and see what the trajectory was of the bullet that entered into the front of the vehicle. If I could just show you <clears throat> that one briefly for M. The orange on the picture, that's the dowel rod? Yes, it is. What direction is that going? If you are in the vehicle, it would be coming at an angle, going out across toward, across the driver's side and out to the front. Where was the victim in relation to this truck? The victim was just off the front left corner driver's side of the vehicle. Is 4N just a can that you collected? Yes, it is. Is there any reason you collected that can? It was in proximity to where the vehicle was, the decedent and the cartridge casings were, so we collected that. Was the fact <clears throat> of its location, other than the fact of its location, was there any other reason that you collected the can? No. At the time we were collecting the evidence, we didn't have information on who the other parties were other than this was our scene. So we collected what appeared to be items that hadn't been out there for more than a few hours, if not a day. Anything that has been out, weathered and stuff, this was a clear day. So if it was weathered, it had been out there a longer period of time. It wouldn't have been involved. If I could ask you to look at Government's Exhibit 40, and I would like to publish this. What is Government's Exhibit 4.0? That's a photograph of the decedent's back. Did you flip the decedent over? Yes, we rolled him onto his side. And what does it show in the middle of his back? There is injuries, holes in his back and his side, 
and there was also lead fragments that were on the ground underneath him or on the asphalt underneath him. Did you collect the lead fragments underneath him? Yes, we did. Why did you collect those? Those were collected, obviously wearing gloves. They were collected, placed into clear Ziploc bags, and then placed inside the six by nine envelopes to be labeled, sealed, and then secured at the crime scene section until submitted to the state lab. I would like to show you <clears throat> government's exhibit for P as in Paul. This may be hard to see for the jury, but can you describe what's in this photo and why you took this particular photo? Well, when we take photographs, we are trying to identify the victim. You know, we took the photograph earlier of the wallet with the social security card on, in it. We also take photographs of tattoos, jewelry, those types of things to help identify somebody later on if we have an issue with not getting fingerprints back or something. This was a tattoo that was inside the webbing of the hand on the decedent. Would you look at 4Q? Is that also, is the purpose of that photo because of the tattoo? Yes, photographing a tattoo on the upper left arm. Are you able to read what the tattoo says or what's on the tattoo? It is SSL are the initials. I ask you to look at government's exhibit for S. What's that a photograph of? That's a photograph of a bullet, the projectile that came out of the cartridge. I would like you to take a look at government's exhibit for V as in Victor. What's the significance of that picture? That's the front of the vehicle that was by the decedent. Is that the same truck where the dowel rod was placed in? Yes, it is. You tested.